So a couple of things we're going to look at uh, today, uh, just quickly, unboxing really. We've got a Behringer FCB 1010 MIDI foot pedal and uh, we've also got a Line 6 Helix H, uh, sorry, Helix LT. Just wanted to look at the uh, difference in packaging. Inside this uh, shipping box is the Helix LT in its own box. So absolutely no issues with uh, you know selling that at a later date with the pristine box. Behringer, on the other hand, has been shipped with the minimal amount of this film, and the box is all scratched, dinged in the corners, as you can see. Pretty annoying. So that's going to affect the value slightly when I go to sell it. If I do in the future, this feels like it's been opened and before it's not sealed. I might just grab the camera on this one. So, as I say, a Behringer MIDI foot controller FCB 1010. I had one of these probably 20 odd years ago when I first purchased the Fender Cyber Twin and uh, I used it, uh, as far as I remember, it was purely for volume and switching between the patches that I uh, used most frequently. The capabilities are uh, huge with this and uh, it's, uh, it does come with a manual, well it did back in the day that I bought one. Uh, let's just get that open. It does, look a bit, it does look a bit banged up, but I suspect it's just the shipping that's done that. Hopefully there'll be no signs of use or damage inside. So we have... Oh, don't tell me there's no manual anymore, for God's sake. Uh, I've just sent off uh, for... Well, I've just received two PDF manuals for the Line 6 Helix LT uh, that I've had printed and we'll do a separate video about that in a minute but I didn't bother with the FCB 1010 because I knew from when I purchased one before that it actually came with a manual <laughs> but it doesn't anymore by the looks of it oh hang on hang on they've changed the size of it let's have a look there we go there it is it's a quick start guide it is not the proper uh, thick manual that they used to uh, supply so uh, yeah apologies for that that is a real basic uh, quick start guide though I'm sure and that's in five different languages so there's going to be about two pages in English so we are going to get the proper manual printed out Hard to film bigger items in the workshop, unfortunately. <laughs> I think I'm just going to rip this bag open. I'm going to put the camera down for a second. Really not much use like this, is it? So we've got a bit of silica gel in a narrow bag of that. Uh, springs back memories of the first one I had. Okay, so let's grab the camera again for a closer look. So, as you can see, we've got one to ten buttons they all have LED indicators and they really are very very nice quality it doesn't look like anything much has changed in the 20 years since I had mine we have a switch one switch two select number value one value two direct select MIDI function MIDI channel configuration we have little covers to peel off which we'll do when we actually start to use this expression pedal A and 
compression pedal be? Now I seem to remember that they were metal pedals, uh, but they are certainly not now. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty certain they were metal pedals uh, years ago. I wonder if anyone else uh, has got any experience with that. Am I wrong? Were they always plastic like that? It just has a different feel. Just wondering whether they've cheaped out on the pedals or not since uh, I purchased mine. So obviously nothing on the sides. Now let's just spin this round. And on the back we have power switch, IC in, uh, various warnings, date code, it's a serial number just on there. Switch one and two out and uh, MIDI in and MIDI out slash through. So pretty much the same as before. Now there were some issues with the early versions of these and if you wanted to solve the problems you had to change the EEPROM that uh, is fitted inside of these. And I noticed recently when I was looking for one of these again that you can still buy various versions to replace the one that's fitted. So I'm going to have to open this up, see what is fitted and, uh, and order as required. Uh, also, this is an utter nightmare to program because you literally have to do all the programming uh, by pressing a combination of buttons and looking at the indications along the top. Now again, I also notice that there is now some downloadable or free downloadable software that's been uh, designed, I can't remember the name of it or who's done it, that allows you to connect this up to a, uh, well I'm guessing USB to MIDI adapter for a PC and actually program it through the software so we'll be looking at that as an option. As I say I only had this set up uh, for the Fender Cyber Twin originally, I had nothing else. This time we've got the, the Line 6 Helix LT and we've also got the RC500 uh, Looper and uh, they're all MIDI so we may uh, just have a little fiddle around and see which one requires it. Uh, and which one I can get away with without uh, using with the MIDI controller. So we'll see, it's all open to uh, to experimentation at the moment. Um, God dear, were they plastic? Oh, I can't remember. Didn't think they were. Maybe they were. I don't know. Let me know. So yeah, quick look at that. Uh, we had a strange incident <laughs> when trying to order this. Amazon uh, had this listed at £85 and it was a free prime next day delivery but as soon as I went to check out it kept coming up with the message that this item is not available to your address so uh, then I tried another <laughs> local address and had the same thing uh, contacted Amazon on their chat system and was simply told well we don't know why that's coming up like that there might be some restriction, but I mean, why? Why would there be a restriction on sending out a MIDI pedal to an address uh, in the UK that they say they ship to? So I couldn't resolve that and I actually had to spend oh, 120 I think it was, from the company that this uh, actually came from in the end. So it's definitely cheaper on Amazon if you can actually get it delivered and, uh, and I couldn't for whatever reason. So yeah, as I say, it's only a quick look at this and uh, we'll get into programming it and we'll also look at the change of the EEPROM uh, if required. I really don't know what uh, version is in this until I've uh, got it open. I don't think there's any way of uh, finding out. I'm not even sure that the software can interrogate the EEPROM and get the version number so we're probably going to have to open it up and there's quite a few screws to remove uh, on uh, on this and on the underside to get access I certainly remember that in the past you've got to take out pretty much all of these screws um, but uh, we've got to do it so there we are quick look at the Behringer Recipe FCB 1010 MIDI foot controller